when about what 10 years ago maybe a little bit more i found the work on the ketogenic diet and epilepsy and i thought at the time it was really interesting that these magical little molecules called ketones could have such a dramatic effect on something that's incredibly scary like epilepsy and it was the beginning of a decade-long geek out session in my own brain on why ketones are so incredibly powerful for the mind. And I know you've spent a lot of your life dedicated to the ketogenic diet and applying it to mental health. Where I would like to start this conversation with is the hero of the moment, in my opinion, which is the ketone. Can you help everybody understand why this molecule needs to be brought into everybody's life? I love the way you put that, by the way, in, in, into everybody's life, not just people's lives, not just people who are suffering from a mental health condition or a neurological health condition or a physical health condition, but everybody's lives. And I don't mean that everybody needs to be in ketosis all the time. Okay. I just mean that all of us, and I made this point in the book because I am convinced of this by the science and the biology of, of cells in our bodies and brains. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to spend time in ketosis on a regular basis in order for their cells to heal, maintain mm. themselves, kind of do some recycling, some cleanup, some healing. And, and, and without regular periods in ketosis, then, you know, it's as if you've got a factory where you're running the machinery 24 seven and you're never taking time to clean up and you're never taking time mm -hmm. to replace the parts and you're never taking time to give the machinery a break and your employees a break from all the hard work of building and maintaining themselves. So my first re re response to that is what's regular? Because we've got both a avid fasters that are going to hear that and be like, oh, so I should fast more. And then we've got huh. reluctant fasters that are like, oh, God, do I have to fast more to get this? And we're going to talk about how diet works in to this. But what can you give me an idea of what regular is? Well, I, perhaps not the best choice of words. So let me back up. So I, it doesn't it doesn't mean that you have to be in ketosis, you know, every so many hours or every so many days you know, with with like clockwork. It just yeah. means periodically and frequently enough that your cells can can get some healing time and some resting time and recovery time. And so depending on who you are and what your current mm -hmm. metabolic state is, that may be once a week, it may be mm -hmm. twice a week, it may be every day. It really yep. depends on who you are. It's very personalized. Your The requirements okay. are really personalized to your needs and your goals. Yeah. And so what is so powerful about the ketone? Like we've heard some things, you know, out in the zeitgeist that I think we always need to challenge is like, it's 50% of the fuel source of the brain and your mitochondria need it as a fuel source. And you're talking about a ketone acting as giving a cleaner and, and giving your cells a break. What, what do we actually know about the brain, neurons, cells, and what the ketones actually do for us? So a lot of people think about, I and mean, I'm glad you started up off the conversation about epilepsy because that's where I began my mm. study of nutrition and, and ketogenic diets as well many years ago. So a lot of people think of ketogenic diets as weight loss diets. Agreed. But, but the ketogenic diet was, as you point out, originally created, designed to stabilize brain chemistry and heal the brain. And that was back in 1921, and the first its first use was to try to help children with very with, with very severe epilepsy who were having multiple seizures per day. This was long before the mm. the emergence of useful seizure medications. Mm -hmm. So they were using this diet. They designed this diet to get as close to fasting as possible without starving children to death because they knew they'd known for millennia that people with epilepsy, when they fasted, their seizures tended to improve. But you can't fast forever. So right. they designed this diet to mimic fasting, 
but still include some nutrition and some calories so that children could still grow and, and thrive. So it is originally, its original purpose was as a brain stabilization diet. And that's where the power of it comes into play with all aspects of brain health, including mental health. Mm -hmm. So so a ketone, you were saying, well, what is a ketone? Why are they so magical? A ketone is just the body has different fuel sources, different ways it can energize itself. It mm -hmm. can use glucose. It can use ketones. It can use many cells, can use a mixture of both. It can use fatty acids. So with the brain, actually, a lot of people think of the a glucose or blood sugar as the ideal fuel source for the brain. That if, mm. if the brain had its way, that it would be operating 100% of the time on pure glucose because glucose is wonderful. And, and it would only use ketones as an emergency backup fuel mm -hmm. in dire situations like you can't find any food and you're out in the wilderness or you have a serious disease. But that's actually not the way the brain is designed to work. The brain, given if you surround brain cells with both glucose and ketones, plenty of both, they will choose on purpose to burn a mixture of the two. They will not burn a 100% glucose. And that's because ketones are a cleaner, more efficient fuel source with, they burn with a lot less inflammation and uh, what's called oxidative stress, which can be very damaging if you've got too much oxidative stress. So really the brain is a hybrid engine, as Professor Stephen yeah. Conane likes to say. It really works best when it's able to change the ratio of the fuels as it needs to and burn a mixture of these two fuels. Yeah. And, you know, that's the exact analogy I say all the time is uh, with fasting. I always say we're a hybrid car. And we need to go from glucose as an energy source and go into ketones. And I think every cell in our body requires that, but it does seem like the brain actually needs that more than any other organ system in the body. So I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely in alignment with you on that one. What, when it comes to to ketones and actually breaking down like I've recently I'm writing a book or I finished writing a book called age like a girl and I spent a lot of time really looking at the aging female brain and I came across some incredible research on ketones as being neuroprotective I saw I saw some incredible research that ketones actually can act like an antioxidant like they can help you from having that oxidative stress like you talked to and I thought that's so interesting because we tend, I tend to think of ketones as, okay, I need my brain supercharged. And what the research really showed that I saw showed was actually it's a protection. It's not just making your brain work well, but it's actually protecting your brain from all the possible damage that can occur in today's modern world. Is that how you look at ketones for the brain as well? It's one of the many health benefits of being in ketosis is that you are taking some of the pressure off of your glucose processing machinery. So, because when you're burning glucose all the time, sugar all the time, that is comes with more oxidative stress. Yeah. And you were saying that you are studying the, you're, you're writing about the aging female brain. And that, re that reminds me to talk about the, one of the one of the flip sides of not being in ketosis is that you're burning usually too much glucose. And so if you're, if you're eating a diet that's bringing your glucose levels up too high after meals or keeping them up too high between meals, and you're eating more glucose than you really need, then that extra glucose will, the higher your blood sugar, the higher your brain sugar. And that mm -hmm. higher level of brain sugar that when the brain can't handle a lot of glucose, it does need some glucose at all times of course, in order to function yeah. optimally, but it doesn't need very much. And so if mm -hmm. you give it more than it needs, that extra glucose sticks. It literally sticks to vital components of the brain, including proteins and lipids and some fats in the membranes of cells, DNA particles, it sticks to vital brain cell components and creates these kind of caramelized clusters called AGEs. 
mm. appropriately named because these sticky yeah, clusters are yeah. for premature aging of the brain. And so the more of these AGEs you have in your brain and body, the faster you age. So yeah. it's as if you're kind of caramelizing yourself to death. <laughs> and so yeah. you're oh, really- Oh, that's a beautiful way to look at it. <laughs> it's a nice way, caramelizing yourself. <laughs> Sounds yummy, but it's not. It's a delicious way to go. But, they, <laughs> but you know, just as you were saying, if you, so ketogenic diets and fasting have a lot of the same benefits. Because mm -hmm. in both cases, you're generating ketones. And, 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 and that means, you, and you can only generate ketones if your insulin and glucose levels come down low enough. Yes. And so when you fast, that's the absolute most efficient way to lower those glucose and ketone levels. Nothing, <laughs> nothing's, nothing does it better because, you know, everything, you know this, but uh, of course you know this, everything we eat with the exception perhaps of pure fat, which nobody really eats, everything we eat raises insulin to some extent. Mm -hmm. And many things we eat raise glucose. And so mm -hmm. the best way to lower your insulin and glucose is to not eat anything at all. And 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 that is really the fastest way to get into ketosis Agreed. and and the cleanest way to do it too. Because if you follow a ketogenic diet, depending on how often you eat and which foods you choose, you may still be getting some some damage from that diet, depending on your food choices, even if you're in ketosis. But if you're fasting, you are not exposing your cells to any kind of food processing pressure at all. Really giving your cells a break from food processing, even if it's processing ketogenic foods, is really healthy and important. I, I feel like we should be neighbors. <laughs> 